WWDC is less than a week away and we've recently been getting more and more leaks which confirm that Apple's 15 inch MacBook Air will be coming on Monday. So in this video, I'll quickly go through those new leaks and then answer a very important question that you need to decide before WWDC. Should you buy the new 15 inch Air or just wait for the new M3 13 inch MacBook Air? Because those leaks have also changed recently as well, so let's jump right into it. On May 1st, Mark Gurman finally came out and boldly confirmed that Apple will in fact be releasing the 15 inch Air at WWDC. And then on May 4th, we got reports from Digitimes that suppliers are stockpiling the new model to prepare for the big launch. And then on May 20th, Morgan Stanley reported that Quanta Computer started ramping up MacBook production in the second quarter of this year, which started in April, which hints at a new MacBook getting released. So with those three recent leaks and everything prior to that, I can say that the 15 inch MacBook Air is coming for sure 100% guaranteed at WWDC. But now let's get right into the whole question of buying the 15 inch Air right away or waiting for the M3 MacBook Air. I recently made a video exploring the possibility of the M3 chip being delayed until the spring of 2024 for various reasons, including issues with three nanometer chip supply and the fact that Apple has a stockpile of M2 chips that haven't been selling too well, which is one of the reasons why the 15 inch Air is coming with an M2 chip. And that's already been confirmed by Digitimes, Mark Gurman, and Ming Chi Kuo. So one big reason to just go with the new 15 inch Air is that you can get it next month instead of potentially waiting until next year if the M3 does in fact get delayed. However, that might actually be a good idea for some people to wait, so let's get right into the comparison. But first, I've got to show off our sponsor, Intahill's 16-inch portable 4K monitor, which is perfect for professional users, especially MacBook and Mac Mini users looking to do things like graphic design, video editing, 3D modeling, or anything else, featuring a thin aluminum design, dual speakers, a bunch of ports like USB-C and HDMI, an IPS panel with up to 10 bit color depth, and a magnetic case with a stand. So whether you already have a MacBook or you're waiting to buy one of the new ones, click the link in the description below to check it out. Now getting back to the 15 inch MacBook Air versus M3 MacBook Air comparison, the first thing we need to discuss is the most important, which is the chip. As we know, the 15 inch is getting the M2, which was known as a stopgap chip when it came out. It seems like it's just an overclocked and tuned up version of the M1 chip with some faster memory and some other changes made, but it's almost the same. Yes, the performance is an upgrade for sure, but it's not big enough to warrant people buying the M2 over the M1 purely for performance reasons. Now the big reason for that is that the M2 is still a five nanometer chip, just the second generation. I believe that from the very beginning, the M2 was planned to be on TSMC's three nanometer, but then that got delayed, so they just went with this stopgap method with the M2, and they delayed the real three nanometer version until the M3 chip. Now the M3 that we are gonna be getting is gonna be very fast in terms of the performance due to the efficiency improvement with the performance per watt, a big jump in efficiency and battery life. I also already estimated and calculated the performance of the M3 chip using leaked A17 scores, and it should be very, very good, even potentially faster than the current Bind M2 Pro chip, but that was just a prototype. Maybe it is gonna be a little bit slower than that, but it's still extremely impressive. Now, one thing we know for sure is that the 15 inch MacBook Air we're getting next month, unfortunately, will not be getting the M3. It's gonna stick to the same M2 chip, so be aware of that. However, the M2 is still a good chip and more than good enough for most people out there, it's just a mental upgrade kind of thing. Now the big issue actually comes with the SSD setup of the M2 Max, like the M2 MacBook Air, where Apple decided to use only a single NAND flash chip for storage, which dramatically reduced the performance of the SSD swap memory when your RAM is full. 
So consider upgrading to 16 gigs of RAM or a 512 gig SSD if you go with the upcoming 15 inch, which is likely gonna have the same setup with the NAND flash. Now on the other hand, with the M3 MacBook Air, there is a chance that Apple changes their ways and packs in two NAND chips again Hopefully they do that, and that would instantly fix the issue with the SSD swap. Now moving further, keep in mind that when the M3 MacBook Air does come out, it'll likely only be the 13 inch display size. So if you want the larger display, then definitely buy the 15 inch MacBook Air as soon as it comes out next month. I believe there's a chance that Apple sees the 15 inch Air as a mid cycle release. So we might not see a 15 inch M3 MacBook Air model until the end of 2024, unless Apple completely holds off on that and releases both a 13 and 15 inch MacBook Air size together with the M4 MacBook Air models in 2025. Now, another important thought is that the battery life will be insane on the 15 inch M2 MacBook Air, probably having the best battery life ever in any MacBook. However, the M3 Air coming later might be so efficient that it could potentially match the same battery life, even with the smaller 13 inch size. Now, moving on from that, the 15 inch MacBook MacBook Air model coming next month is likely going to have a larger trackpad, which is more convenient. It's going to have larger and better speakers, which is common on the larger model MacBooks right now. The large display will also be really, really nice for media consumption and things like editing photos, videos, rendering, any other productivity work and the large display will make the bezels look even thinner than it already does on this machine. However, don't expect anything else that's special on the 15 inch M2 MacBook Air compared to the current M2 model. They're gonna be almost identical in terms of the features and specs. Maybe it'll get Bluetooth 5.3 and Wi-Fi 6E, but we don't know that for sure. But then on the other hand, the M3 13 inch MacBook Air coming later is likely gonna be very similar to this this one in terms of the design, since it just got fully redesigned. However, there is a chance that Apple adds in some upgrades that we're not expecting. Like maybe they're gonna add Face ID authentication or even 5G cellular service, but none of that has been confirmed, it's just been rumored, so we don't have anything concrete just yet. And now the final thing to consider is gonna be the price. I personally expect the 15 inch Air model to come in around $200 more expensive than a similarly specced 13 inch MacBook Air model, including the later M3, which I think is gonna stay the same price, $1199 as it currently is. So that basically puts the price of the 15 inch Air at $1,400 for the base model and $1,600 if you wanna upgrade either the storage or the RAM. And that could be a tough pill to swallow since right now on Amazon, you can get a base M1 MacBook Air for only $800, literally half of that price. You can also find a refurbished M2 13 inch Air on Amazon for only $939, which is a great deal if you're looking to budget. But of course, the 15 inch Air is gonna be awesome since the larger size will make it seem impossibly thin and the display will make it so much more useful. So in my opinion, if you don't care about saving a little bit of money and going with those great deals on Amazon, I think the 15 inch Air will be really special and it'll be a great laptop to buy for many years to come, even if it doesn't have the latest three nanometer M3 chip. It's still gonna be more than good enough. So let me know your thoughts down below on the 15 inch MacBook Air and click that circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one. Definitely check out our other WWDC videos right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.